certain musicians have achieved a reputation which transcends the era in which they work, and undoubtedly one of these is Gene Krupa. To many people, Krupa is the epitome of the swing era, the wild gesticulating drummer, hair falling over the eyes, taking lengthy solos. In fact, he was very much more than that. He was a man whose basic technique was derived from the great coloured drummers of the past, such as Chick Webb and Joe Jones. Of course, I, I came out of Chicago, and uh, mainly there it was Baby Dots, Davy Tuff, George Wetling, uh, Zudi Singleton, Tubby Hall. Uh, then when I got to New York, Chick Webb was a very great influence on my playing. Uh, Manzi Johnson, Cozy Cole, and of course, Relaxation was to go down on 52nd Street, and at that time, their uh, Basie was appearing on 52nd uh, I felt uh, pretty bad. I, uh, I didn't want to see anybody. I came home here. I just I built this house in 19... 40, I think, and this thing happened in 1943. I came back here and I was going to go into uh, into writing music and so forth. Maybe teaching, stuff like that. And uh, Benny Goodman called me up one day and said, uh, come on out to the house and we'll play some. So I did and it felt good and he talked me into going to the New Yorker hotel with him and I did. And then uh, I saw that the people accepted uh, what I had to offer. And, uh, in other words, come home, honey, all is forgiven, you know. And uh, I broke down the, the nightclub scene, but then uh, I was a little bit apprehensive about the theater scene. That's something else. To see people parading up and down. With, Don't go see this guy. He smoked a stick of tea. So I went into the Paramount Theater with, with Tommy Dorsey and was received there, too and uh, formed my band. I stayed with Tommy about uh, oh, six, seven months and then formed my own band, started up again. What do we have here now? So this is the studio, right? Have the bass, drum, the snare drum, the two tom-toms, two simultaneous octaves. I think the first time Joe Jones ever heard me was somewhere in Minneapolis. And when I told him how much I in, in enjoyed his playing, he said, well, man, I was trying to play like you. And here I am trying to play like him. So I know that every opportunity I would uh, uh, visit with Joe uh, to pick up what I could. And uh, uh, I like to think that uh, he felt the same way about me. Uh, Joe, uh, to me, being a drum man, is the sound of Count Basie. I'll roll, roll to, to that. that. Strange as it might seem, you might come into the shop, and there's a clarinet player, there's a saxophone player, there's a, a guitar player, because they have to know rhythm patterns, too. You see, I don't care whom they are, they have to start with the drum. And they're real loud from the drum. They're not going to a pianist to get it, because the pianist has to take it from the drum. Joe Jones is the grandfather of modern drumming and is perhaps the world's greatest living drummer, certainly of his era. His snare drum roll has been likened to the pouring of hot fudge over marble, a comparison that suggests the easy humour of his style. Not a drummer who ever incorporates volume as part of his technique, the most strident effect in Jones's percussive inventory are his rim shots, likened to the firing of a hail of bullets at the soloist's feet. Another apt comparison this, since Jones started his life in music as a dancer. He works regularly around New York, still tours abroad and makes records. But these days, his first priority is to the drum shop in which he's a partner. Some of us don't get the experience, as others do. And when they don't have these experience, that's what the shop is all about. Most days, he'll drop in for an hour or two, take his pupils through their paces in the drum studios above the shop, or maybe just work out himself. Now, now you 
know is what you just got through doing. That you let the stick play instead of the stick play you. Because you get the rebound off the percussion, and off your drum. Well, that's what I shouldn't overstep himself in many directions. For instance, he, he shouldn't make his solo that long that the guy's got to go up and, and, and get a drink to, to take the rest of it. to feel that he's losing the interest of the of the audience and and quit you know give the signal for the band to come on in which in my case used to be uh, oh I haven't got a call bell here but I always uh, when I was getting ready to go out I never had a in my own band I never had a stipulated amount of bars to play but when I gave I'd be playing along and when I gave this signal <laughs> That would mean that, uh, that uh, I'm going to go out pretty soon. And of course, I'd make a, a pretty obvious break uh, as to where they should come in like. Uh, 